Let's get more on what all of this means with Christopher Nicholson. He is Director of Independent Equity Research House Orica. Christopher, thank you very much for coming to talk to us. First of all, um, let's start with this ruling. Uh, was it a surprise to you or did you expect them to step in and, uh, and prevent the Portuguese government from using this golden chair? Morning, Andrew, and thank you for inviting us. Um, not a huge surprise given the EU's attitude towards golden shares, which from an economic perspective we think is absolutely right, uh, because the golden shares were often used to prevent the acquisition or control of one large flagship business by another European large flagship business, which effectively up prevents the free flow of capital. So the principle is correct. And, and indeed, the history of this presumably is because it was a national company, is that right? Correct. And there's also a fear for uh, Portugal that Portugal Telecom is one of its largest companies and its stock exchange, the PSI, is essentially a representation of Portugal Telecom and one or two other companies. Uh, the problem for Portugal is it could see that without Vivo, Portugal Telecom had no long-term attraction to investors because it had no growth profile and Portugal itself is a too small a market uh, for stable long-term investors to be interested in a telco in that space. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about South American uh, telecoms in a minute but just on the uh, on the Portugal telecom investors were actually keen on this deal from Telefonica is that because they were offering good money for it? Yes they were very keen I mean they uh, I think it was nearly 70% uh, said yeah or just over 70% said yes they would accept the 7.15 billion euro offer from Telefonica, which was its third offer. Uh, we actually think the number that Portugal Telecom needs to get is about 8 billion euros. Uh, and we think investors should hold out for that because we think Vivo is worth that. The multiples on the Brazilian exchanges are lower than they are on European exchanges. But actually, Telefonica and Portugal Telecom, their cash flows from that investment are rated by European standards. So there is a higher price to be paid, in our view, and we think that price is 8 billion euros. Uh, do you think that they'll go for that? Well, I think investors have already said yes to 7.15. Right. Uh, so unless we're right. able to go around and see them all, and we don't have any interest in doing so, yeah. uh, we think that probably will go at 7.15. Now, this all points to there being a huge uh, and burgeoning market in uh, Brazil and elsewhere in South America. Presumably, that's where the interest is, right? Yes, well, it, I mean, it's a very interesting situation. <clears throat> we have two continents which we think are key to future growth mm -hmm. um, for telcos in particular, but it applies to other companies too. But it's very important for infrastructure. LATAM, which is a long way down the track now mm -hmm. um, and is getting to very interesting inflection points where large investment projects may make a lot of sense, uh, and Africa. Um, and Africa, although it's commonly misunderstood, is in fact underpopulated from an economic development perspective, uh, but it also lacks infrastructure, uh, and some of that's basic. But this is now changing, spurred by China, but it's causing Europe to compete. Uh, and that's a good thing for Africa, and it'll be a good thing generally for the global economy. Telefonica is dependent on LATAM for its long-term valuation in our view. OK. Christopher Nicholson from Orica, thank you very much indeed for coming in to see us today and explaining all of that so clearly. Thank you.